We all want to achieve the emission reductions to, to reach the country's goals, to support the global movement toward a lower carbon economy. But we want to do it in a really pragmatic, economic manner. Welcome to Global Energy Shows 5x5. Five five. I'm Rachel Gregory. Today we're chatting with Jackson Hegland, Executive Director of Methane Emissions Leadership Alliance, an organization committed to measuring, monitoring, and reducing methane emissions. Jackson, what can you tell us about the Methane Emissions Leadership Alliance and the goals you are trying to achieve? Rachel, we're an industry association of about 40 solution providers. And our goal really at this point is to support governments and industry on their objectives for methane mitigation. So when industry is looking for solutions to reduce or manage their methane emissions, we hope that they come to us as a primary resource. When government is looking for field data, understand where the R&D focus areas our look at program development for some potential funding opportunities we look to support throughout that process. In the next 10 years, what would you like to see provincially and federally when it comes to methane mitigation? And what do you think other countries could adopt in order to reach global climate targets? Well, how long do we have really? Um, <laughs> I mean, what we'd like to see is, you know, continued uptake of readily available technologies and solutions that exist right now. Continued focus, obviously, on R&D and bringing emerging technologies to market with the ultimate objective of continuing to minimize the cost to industry to implement these solutions. And that does require everybody in the ecosystem to be a part of the dialogue and a part of the solution. So we all want to achieve the emission reductions to, to reach the country's goals to support the global movement toward a lower carbon economy. But we want to do it in a really pragmatic economic manner because we do want to continue to support the growth of the oil and gas industry here in Canada. We've got such a wonderful asset. We've got a very clean asset. You know, your members are committed to reducing methane emissions. So with that, you must see some incredible technologies and innovations from some of these companies. What what kind of things are you seeing from your members that are working towards these goals? I, this is probably one of the coolest parts of this job. The types of technologies and solutions that are emerging is, is really exciting. You're seeing software programs that are being developed that that are managing the data much more creatively and, and allowing for much better decision making. We're seeing a lot of work done in remote sensing, but even then when you look at some of the more conventional equipment that's on site and how there are lower emitting solutions, there's a lot of uh, alternatives coming through. What is really neat, seeing what the re regulatory environment and the supporting mechanisms are doing to innovation. You've got folks that may be innovated on a technology 10 years ago, that they're innovating again now and pivoting their business into this clean technology, clean energy space. How does Canada's regulatory environment differ from other countries? And why would you say Canada is a leader in the regulatory landscape? Good question. I, you know, we've been very fortunate to have the opportunity sort of pre-COVID, of course, to travel around and speak to some of the other folks in jurisdictions like Europe and the Middle East and the U.S. in particular. I think what's unique about Canada's regulatory landscape, it's very diverse. We have regulations around combustion and flaring, and that does directly have an influence on the uh, methane regulations as well. We've had governments step up to the plate with funding programs. We are very lucky in that we're far along the regulatory path as well as the supporting mechanism path, which is where these other jurisdictions are looking at us. At the Global Energy Show, we're bringing in industry experts from all sources to open the dialogue for meaningful discussions. In your opinion, how can these industries work together to help Canada achieve its sustainability targets? We're certainly very hopeful that it continues to grow. And rather than having to staff up or, or gain new expertise within one organization, these strategic partnerships can can bring the best of both worlds together. Uh, those types of, of solutions, I think, will really move the dial domestically and internationally. Thank you so much, Jackson, for the insightful conversation and the information about the Methane Emissions Leadership Alliance. It was so wonderful to chat with you today. Much, Rachel. <laughs>